host notifications are all based on XML templates provided by Windows. Each template has varying content and layout, and the layout can contain text or text and an image. You use these templates to allow your apps to share a common look and feel with other Windows applications. And the XML template provides all the Toast features that there are. In other words, you specify what you want your Toast to look like by filling in data into the XML. If there's no place to put it in the XML, there's no feature of Toast that supports it. Although the wrapper API makes working with the XML easier, you really need to understand what the basic schema of the templates looks like before you use that API. The toasts are very simple XML. You may need to modify the content using the XML DOM if you're not using the API, and we'll learn the details along the way as we investigate the basic XML. The toast schema looks something like this. There's a toast root element, then there's a visual child element. Within there is the binding element, which has an attribute named template, which contains a string, which is the template name. The template name will be one of eight predefined template names. Within this binding element, you could have text elements, an image element, and possibly an audio element. Then we have the ending tags for each of those elements. And that's all there is in the XML for a toast. Each toast template contains different arrangements of the internal text and image elements, and you can add the audio element if you want to override the default behavior of the audio in the toast. The template attribute of that binding element determines how line breaks and how bold text appear in the toast. And the eight different templates define different combinations of text and images. We're going to work through each of the eight templates. We'll look at code to build the Toast notifications later. We'll examine the design options now. Each example shows XML content, which is a fake markup for the Toast, and the provided API makes working with the XML content less important, but it's helpful to understand the schema before you use the API. Now you want to note that the application's small logo appears on the Toast, so if you want something different to appear there, you'll need to change the application small logo. It's an application level feature. The first type of toast is toast text 01, which has a single string wrapped across a maximum of three lines of text. If your string is too long, it will be truncated with an ellipsis at the end. Here's what the markup might look like. Again, it's the toast element with the visual element inside of it, with a binding element inside that with a template attribute indicating what kind of toast it is. And then for the toast text 01, there's simply a single text element with some text inside of it. And it might look something like this. Note the small app logo on the right-hand side of the toast. Toast Text 2 has one string of bold text on the first line, and then one string of regular text wrapped across the second and the third lines. There's never more than three lines of text in a Toast notification. For that sort of notification, you'll see two text elements, one with an ID of 1, one with an ID of 2, containing the bold text in the first one and the regular text in the second. And here you see Text 02, was part of that first text element, and the rest of the text was in the text whose ID was 2. Toast Text 3 has one string of bold text wrapped across the first and the second lines. As opposed to the previous one, which just had one line of bold text, this one can have two lines of bold text, with one string of regular text on the third line. Again, we just have text ID 1, and text ID2 in the XML, but this time you have bold text that can wrap and a third line which is not bold. Toast Text 4 has one string of bold text on the first line, one string of regular text on each of the second and third lines, and there's no wrapping. Here you have three text elements whose IDs are 1, 2, and 3, with text in each of them. You might see something like this on your Toast notification. 
the bold line is first, and then two secondary lines of text, both of which don't wrap. They just get truncated. That's the first four without images. Then we have four corresponding templates with images. So toast image and text 01 has an image and a single string wrapped across a maximum of three lines of text, just like the original one we saw. So it has an image in addition to the text. You can see there's a source and an alt attribute for that image, indicating where that image comes from and alternate text for the image in case you can't find the image. That's what this might look like. Toast image and text two is an image, then one string of bold text on the first line, and one string of regular text wrapped across the second and third lines. And it's the same as toast text 02 plus the image element. And it might look something like this, with a bold line first, and then wrapping text on the second and third lines. Toast image and text 03 has an image plus one string of bold text wrapped across the first two lines, and one string of regular text on the third line, just like toast text 03. Its XML looks like this. It's just toast text 03 plus an image element. And then it might look something like this. Finally, we have toast image and text 04, which is an image, then one string of bold text on the first line, and then one string of regular text on each of the second and third lines with no wrapping. Again, you'll have an image plus three text elements in the XML and you'll have a toast notification that looks something like this. So to create those toast notifications, we have to build XML manually. Really? Managing the XML manually is a simple way to create toast notifications. I like working with the XML DOM and I'm not really intimidated by it. Others don't like it as much. This is the preferred method if you only need to create one or two toast notifications because there's no overhead. To use the API, you have to include a reference to an external library, and it's not one of the built-in namespaces, so it adds some extra overhead. And really, this is pretty simple coding. The windows.ui.notifications namespace supports schema for the toasts, and the windows.data.xml.dom namespace provides programming support for XML. To retrieve the template, you'll need to work with the toast template type enumeration, which provides enumerated values corresponding to each template. The toast template type dot toast image and text 02 enumerated value, for example, will get you a reference to and hand you the XML template you need for that kind of toast notification. The toast notification manager class provides the tools you need to retrieve and work with these templates. For example, the get template content method takes an enumerated value like that toast image and text 02 value, and it returns a template skeleton for you as XML. It's up to you then to fill in all the values in that XML. You want to use the XML DOM to set values for the text and the image. For images, you'll want to set the alt and source attributes, and optionally, you can set the duration, you can set audio, and you can set launch parameters. And you know, that really isn't optional. We'll have more on this later, but if you want your application to respond to clicking on the toast and do something, you have to pass values in there. To display the toast, you create a new toast notification instance, and you supply the XML template that you retrieved from the notification manager as a parameter to this constructor. You use the create toast notifier method of the toast notification manager class to create a toast notifier instance and then you call the show method passing your toast notification instance to make the toast display. In other words, you get the template, you fill in its data, you create an instance of a toast notification given that template, and then we call the create toast notifier method to create a toast notifier and we call the show method of that notifier given our notification to display it. Our demonstration uses the toast image and text 02 template. It displays one line of text bold, displays one line of text wrapping over two lines of the notification, and it has an image. 
and we'll work with XML directly to build this notification. Let's give it a try. In Visual Studio, I've created a new project using the blank app template named XML Toast Demo. And here I'd like to be able to display picture on the toast. So to do that, I'm going to add an images folder to my project. And now I'll need to get the image I'd like to display. I like kittens, so let's use a kitten image. There we are. And now on mainpage.xaml, I'm going to add a button I can use later to display my toast. So here I'll add a button. I'll set its content to be click me. And that's all I'm going to need for now. There's my button. Now I need to add some code. So let's go over to the code here. And before I get started, I'm going to need to add some using statements to make my code easier to type. I've got those already typed into my code snippet file, so you don't have to watch me laboriously type code. And we'll start by adding a using statement for windows.ui.notifications for the toast stuff and windows.data.xml.dom for the XML stuff. I'm going to need a procedure that will display my toast, so I'll go create a procedure called display toast, a private void procedure. Inside there, I'll start by getting a template for my notification. And to do that, I'll call, or first actually, set up a variable, toast template, of type toast template type, which is an enumerated value. If I type this, you'll see that my options are the eight different templates that I have available to me. I'll choose toast image and text 02. Next, I'll ask the Toast Notification Manager class to call its getTemplateContent method given the enumerated value we want to retrieve a template for. And finally, I'll call the getXML method of that XML document so I can look at the content of the document and see what we got. I'll put a breakpoint there, and I'm going to need some way to get this procedure called. So let me go back to my designer and double click the button to create an event handler for that button. There we go. And inside this procedure, I'll type display toast. So we call that procedure. Let me save it and run it. I click the button, I hit the breakpoint, I step over it. And now if I hover over this and view it as XML, you'll see that we got back the bare bones template we'll need to display our toast. There are placeholders for the image and for the two text strings that we'll need. One of the text strings has an ID of one, the other has an ID of two. Let's stop debugging. Get rid of this line of code, which I'm not gonna need at the moment. And now let's go start inserting XML content. Here, I'm going to first look for a text element whose ID is 1. To do that, I use this XPath expression, which says look for a text element, that is an element whose name is text, at any level in the document whose ID attribute happens to have a value of 1. That's the syntax for that in XPath. Once I find that element, and of course I might not, if that's the case, I'd get an error, but I'm assuming things will work out for now. So sue me, there's no error handling in here. I'm going to append a new child as a child of that element. And I get that child by having the root of this document call its create text node, given the text I'd like to display in bold. Next, I add the code, which will create the non-bolded wrapping text element. And in this case, I look for a single node named text whose ID value is 2. And in this case, I append a child to that element, which I get by calling create text node with this long piece of text, which definitely will wrap. Finally, I need to get the image information set. And here I will again 
search for the image element. And once I find it, I'm going to set the source and alt attributes of that element. Well, at this point, I want to make sure I've done everything right. So let's put that line of code in again, which gets me the XML, put a breakpoint there, and run it full speed. Click the button, we get the XML. Let's look at the XML. There it is. And you can see now our template has been filled in with the bits of information that we've supplied. I think we're ready to display our toast at this point. So let's stop debugging. And let's go get the code that will display the toast. We don't need this anymore. So now that we got rid of that, we can add the code that will create the toast notification given our XML that we've set up. And we'll call the create toast notifier method to create a toast notifier and call the show method of that toast notifier given our toast notification. And this ought to just work. With all that code in place, I should be able to now run the app project, click the button, and see a toast. Uh-oh, no toast. Why not? Hopefully you know why not. I've mentioned it a few times. The application has to opt in to displaying toast notifications. Unless you do that, nothing displays. So let's go to package.appxmanifest and look for the option to display our toasts. Well, before update one, I'm running Visual Studio update one, this was easy to find. It was pretty transparent here, but now they've buried it. You have to know to click on all image assets and then notifications appears. And now we'll set this to yes. So we do want our application to be Toast capable. Let's save it all and run it again. Click the button. And the toast appears. The audio didn't quite make it. Let me try again. Let's get rid of the toast. Click it again. Listen carefully. And in the background, maybe you can hear that audio on your own machine. You'd be able to hear the audio. And after seven seconds, it just disappears. If I click the button and go to some other application, and then click on this, it takes me back to my running application, which is what you want a toast to do. So we've built a toast and it appears and it displays what it should display, bold, not bolded, wrapped, there's the logo, there's an X to dismiss it, we can click it to dismiss it here or click it to go to the app or do nothing and allow it to dismiss itself after seven seconds. We've done this the hard way, there must be an easier way to do the same work.